who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows the handiwork of the Lord. One day shall the tale to another, and one night impart knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep hath God set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridge, like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. He goes forth from the uttermost bed of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rule is not. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much by gold. Sweeter are the night than money in the home. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is a great reward. Good child of the day of death, cleanse me from my secret faults. Of all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get domain, dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of the great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the letter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistake in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the riddle. If we put bits into the mouths of the horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are, are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also is the tongue of a small member, yet it, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is the fire. The tongue is placed among my members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets it on fire at the cycle of nature, and itself set on fire by God. For every species of bird, of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame a tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we to those who are made in the likeness of God. For the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and rapid water? Can a fig, can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to one known to us as Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. 
and the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what they can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of Christ. And we pray to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Matthew. Can I ask you a theological question? That was the conversation opener at dinner one evening a couple of years ago when we could gather together in someone's home for dinner. Those who think pop quizzes end when you graduate from school are sadly mistaken. Sure, I said, trying to sound brave. So my questioner continued. What is the Christian position on vows? Can you get out of a vow that you made to God? Well, I said, reflecting on our limitations as human beings, let me think. We aren't perfect. We all make mistakes. God knows this. God is a forgiving, merciful God. God works with our limitations. So yes, God forgives us our vows though there may be consequences. That seemed to satisfy my questioner at the time, conversation over. The only problem is the question keeps coming back to me. If it's that easy to get out of our vows, what's the point? Is there any value in making vows? If it's that easy to get out of our vows with God, is there anything left to rely on? Where does it stop? We are, after all, people of the covenant, serious vows between God and God's people. We enter that covenant through the vows we make at our baptism. Many of us were baptized as children, and we were too young to answer for ourselves, so our parents and sponsors made those vows on our behalf. Then at our confirmation, we took those vows on our vows to God ourselves. So the question is, do these promises mean anything? Do we ever give them any real thought? Do we even remember what those promises were? So let me refresh your memories. The first promises or vows deal with our relationship with God. We, all, we renounce all that rebels against God, corrupts and destroys the creatures of God, draws us from the love of God. Now the word renounce is not very common these days, so sometimes we don't really think about what we're saying, but renounce means to abandon.
abandon a cause, bad habit, or way of life. So in baptism and confirmation, we promise God that we will abandon all that is opposed to God, all that destroys God's creation, and all that draws us away from God's love. Sounds like a pretty good plan of action to me. What do you think? The next vows involve our relationship with Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves to Jesus Christ. We promise to obey him as Lord. We entrust ourselves to Christ's grace and love. That title, Lord, gets repeated frequently in our prayer and our worship. Perhaps the best known prayer is the Lord's Prayer. Yet in our political system here in Canada, there aren't many Lords around. So I'm thinking not many of us have ever met a Lord in person. Lord comes from a term that means bread keeper, the one who provides for the needs of the people. So in baptism and confirmation, we dedicate ourselves to follow and obey the teachings and the direction of Jesus Christ, the one who supplies all our needs, our bread keeper who feeds us with his own body, and we place ourselves in Christ's service, a service that is described as perfect freedom. When we think about it, these vows we make to God are in fact life-giving for us. Why ever would we want to get out of them? So the better question becomes, how are we doing in keeping them? In a way, that was Jesus' question to his disciples when he asked, who do people say that I am? When people look at me, listen to me, follow me, do they see my relationship with God? I'm thinking we could ask the same question. Who do people say that we are? After all, we are the body of Christ. When people look at us, what do they see? What conclusions do they draw about us? Do we live lives that reflect the vows we have made to God? Are we present as a Christian community in our neighborhood in a way that reflects the vows we have made to God as God's people in this place? When people look at us, do they see our relationship with God? In other words, do we live lives that point to God, lives that reflect God's passion, God's justice, God's love? All well, that's easy to say, but living lives that point to God can be a challenge. It means standing alongside victims of injustice, advocating for the voiceless, putting our money where our mouth is, living with integrity. And that doesn't make us very popular. For Jesus, it led to the cross, but it also led to resurrection, to new life. That's the good news. Of course we are human. I was right in my answer to my questioner. We all make mistakes and God is forgiving. God is merciful. Yet if our readings this morning have anything to say to us, it is most certainly that the way to life is in the fulfilling of our vows to God. When we make our baptismal vows, we count on God's Way back when we made our baptismal vows, we counted on God's help. With God's love and grace to support us and Christ's example to guide us, our vows become easier to keep. And in keeping our vows, we join all creation, telling of the glory of God, bearing the fruits that come from a life lived in partnership with our Lord. Now that's a life worth living. Thanks be to God. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was hurt. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessing. Amen. Free by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, Mark, Anne, and Todd, our bishops, Sam, our archdeacon, Doug, our honorary assistant, Adele, our priest, and for all clergy and Gracious God, we call your church to the body of love you have shown us. Raise us up each day to bear witness against sin, death, and the grave. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Creative God, quarks and galaxies bear witness to your imagination. Inspire scientists, naturalists, and conservationists who work to conserve precious natural resources. Grant us the wisdom to be the keepers of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you bless citizens with the gifts of reason and perseverance. Embolden people around the world to seek the common good, to serve their neighbors, and to delight in freedom. We pray especially for all who offer themselves as candidates in the upcoming federal election. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world as we share in the effects of COVID 19. For essential service workers, healthcare workers, researchers, political decision makers, those who are ill, those who are in quarantine or in isolation, and those who are abandoned and alone at this time. Loving God, you bless us with an abundant world. When your children wander homeless, hungry, naked, Strengthen us to be your presence as we care for all those in need, especially the victims of hurricanes and floods, and those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Reverend Albert, as he completes his ministry in Lincoln and prepares for his new ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Jim Ross, Carleen Scoville, and their families, that they may know God's grace in their lives. For Amanda, our foster child in India. For our brothers and sisters in our companion diocese of Amazonia in Brazil, and for Mary as their bishop. For our brothers and sisters in the London Antioch Presbyterian Church. For our partnership with St. John the Evangelist and chaplains at Western. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming God, thank you for this worshiping community where we have. Make us restless as we seek you and create ways to expand our loving invitation to all people who seek a community. We pray for our hospitality breakfast program, for our Lewis Place Coffee House Ministry, for our ministry to the Western University community, for Fanshawe College. For international students far from home in this difficult time. For all teachers, students, and researchers, that all creation may be blessed through their learning and their discoveries. For the work of the bridge builders. Lord, in your mercy, you are yeah. our prayer. We pray for the courage to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service to seek to transform unjust structures of society, and to strive to safeguard and maintain the of creation, sustaining and renewing the life of the earth, that in all we do, we may follow the example of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. 
With aching hearts, we pray for the children who died at residential schools across this land. We pray for their First Nations brothers and sisters in the Surround them with your healing love and comfort. Teach us to do the truth, work of truth and reconciliation, but that which there can be no true healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In every time and in every place, you have raised up examples of loving service. Make us all good and loving witnesses to your extravagant compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your own passion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in Jesus' life, to the honor and glory of our name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be all with you. And also with you. Greet one another to day with the Jesus.
He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, gathering upon all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We need to make our own body, for we all share in one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
May we who have been nourished by holy things always have the courage to forgive. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power, power working in us and the infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And now may God the Creator grant you grace to see yourselves as God made you. God of love, Grant you the grace to value yourselves as God values you. God of life, grant you the grace to dream God's purpose for you and the courage to live that purpose from the depths of your being. And the blessing of God, creator, lover, and giver of life, be with you and those whom you love and care for this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace, rejoicing in the life giving power of the Holy Spirit, to love and serve your God. Thanks be to God.